Hey everybody, so today we're going to be talking about something called the Rankin Cycle. And you might see from the last video I still have some stuff written up here. Why did I leave this up here? I did this for a reason, right? Basically, the, 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 the Brayton Cycle dealt with an ideal gas, right? The Brayton Cycle, I'm sure you can sort of see where I'm going with this, deals with, with water. So, um, that's Rankin. Rankin, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it properly, forgive me. But basically, it's the same exact thing that's going on, except... Um, now that we're dealing with, with water, we can call this compressor a pump, right? Because a, a compressor that deals with water is called a pump. So this is just going to be a pump. Same boiler con condenser turbine. The only thing that's going to, well, there are a few things change. All right. But I'm going to erase all of this because it, this is what we do when we have an ideal gas. Um, or, mm, we, we, we need to draw that dome in there to, to represent the phase changing diagram, right? And just know that the only difference between the Rankine cycle and the Brayton cycle is the fact that the Brayton cycle uses air and the Rankine cycle uses water. And I use this, I don't really know how good this is for you to remember, but I use RAB. Water for the Rankine, air for the Brayton, right? Um, that's the little mnemonic I use to remember that. Basically, what we're going to end up having for um, the little graph that we have to draw, right? We have, I'm going to draw it much bigger this time. We have our phase changing diagram. Now let's go ahead and draw our TS diagram. And you remember what the TS diagram looks like, right? And I'm going to go ahead and draw our dome. And we know what's going on here, right? Um, on the right side, we have a superheated vapor. On the left side, we have... Um, um, condensed liquid and in between saturated liquid vapor mixture, right? Um, so like we know, we're dealing with two pressures, right? So I'm just going to write pressure one and pressure two just to simplify it, even though we know that pressure um, pressure two and pressure three are equal and pressure one and pressure four are equal, right? Um, it's sort of hard to conceptualize without an actual problem, but basically there are things that go on here, right? So we end up having um, we end up having, just, just, just imagine a problem from, let's say we went from a condensed liquid to a superheated vapor at the end, right? Okay, let me just draw this. So let's say we started out here, right? That was my state one, right? With that isentropic compression, we're going to go from pressure one to pressure two, right? So that pressure increases and, and, and we end up having something that looks like this. That's just a straight line up. So from, from state one to state two, we have that line, right? And then you know that, that, that as we're heating it up, right, it's a constant pressure, so it follows this constant pressure line. So let me write P2 and P1, right? So as we're heating it up at constant pressure, it's following this constant pressure line, doing what a superheated vapor, or doing what, what, what any phase-changing substance does, right? Goes through from condensed liquid to starts saturating, starts, starts turning into a saturated liquid vapor mixture, then maybe goes to superheated. So let's just say this one went to superheated, all right? Um, that's going to be my state three, okay? And, and I'm still drawing my arrows here. Okay, so this is what we end up getting there. Next, since it's an isotropic expansion, right, that, that, that um, temperature ended up going down and, 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 and we had that, that uh, same entropy, right? So that's just a straight line down. Oops, and that's state four, right? So we get there and then and then again, we, we start removing heat at a constant pressure, so it follows our constant pressure line back down to state one. So maybe we, we ended up at, as, as a superheated vapor, and we started out as a condensed liquid. It doesn't always do this, right? You might, you might start, I don't know, depending on the problem they give you, you might start here. But it's still the same logic and thought process we have to follow through, right? Um, that being said, we can't say that, um, we can't say that our, um, like like T two to three, uh, our change in in heat right from T two to three is our um, CP because we're not dealing with a CP that's an ideal gas right we're dealing with a, a phase changing substance but we can also see that that we still have the same working here um, heat in work out heat out right because we're still dealing with the same diagram. So I want you to just know that the only difference between the Brayton and the Rankine cycle is the fact that one deals with water and one deals with air. What deals with air? The Brayton cycle. What deals with water? The Rankine cycle. Um, okay, let me talk about this. 
we were asking for efficiency of the whole thing. Um, same thing with a, with, a, with a Brayton cycle. I don't think I mentioned it in the last video. But the efficiency is just simply given by that one minus Q out minus Q in. And, and that's what we end up getting. So that's, what, that's really all you need to know for the, the Rankine cycle. We're gonna practice some problems, so just to get you more of an idea of anything that I said wasn't clear, but that's basically what we end up getting. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave comments in the comment section. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe and tell your friends. Um, so let's keep learning thermal. Thank you.